Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're jumping back into some more Project Architect. So, I hope you guys are ready. Hey guys, real quick, wanted to mention today is World Download Day. So if you're a supporter of any tier, and I mean any tier, if you're on Patreon, if you are a supporter on Discord with the new Discord Premium members, if you are a Twitch subscriber of any tier, be sure to get your world download. All you gotta do to get it is go to discord.gg forward slash shows dark tech. And if your all of your accounts are linked up, you should see up there at the very top, the world download channel where I have all of my world downloads from all of my previous Let's Plays. It's quite an archive, so be sure to check that out. And of course, guys, let's get on with today's video. So starting off today, I am doing exactly what you think I'm doing. I am working on replacing my tools. So at the moment, my tools are definitely in need of replacing. I should have replaced them a long time ago. Um, and we have enough EMC now that I can actually pull out here as many things as I really want. So like dark matter shears, for some reason it doesn't pull out the dark matter shears, but I do have them right there. Um, and I'm able to make all of these individual tools, uh, which is going to give me, I believe a single tool um, that I could use like this one, for example, that has multiple different uses, a guitar here, and also a red morning star, which has several uses. Now, I think I also want a regular pick um, simply because this thing in its standard mode uh, is, is pretty interesting. Let's, uh, let's actually go down into our mine and uh, work a little bit with this tool because it can be kind of daunting and uh, kind of scary if you're not ready for it. By default, it's pretty nice. But if we start to increase things, the speed goes up, right? Um, but we can accidentally shift left click as well, um, which does that same sort of uh, system uh, as the uh, destruction catalyst. So as you can see, it can make some incredibly large holes that we may not exactly want. Like for example, this, yeah, this, this, this starts to make some, uh, some incredibly large mining holes. Um, but it's overall speed increases as well as you do that. You just gotta be careful not to shift right click it. Um, that's where the pick can come in handy. The pick by default does not have that, that shift right click feature but it does get faster the higher up we go on our mining. So I do like this. So this is a pretty nice mining speed right here. I mean, that's, it's almost insta break. Um, so I will keep this on me because this can break wood as well. This is basically a multi-tool that can break just about anything, but man, that shift right click, pretty dangerous, pretty dangerous, especially when you have it turned all the way up. Now this guitar is, is actually pretty, or guitar, not guitar. Um, the guitar is pretty powerful. You can change modes, so you can have it slay all, mo uh, all uh, slay hostile and slay passive. I guess it has two modes. You can slay everything or you can just slay hostiles. Um, I want it set to just slay hostiles for right now uh, because I don't want to just go randomly killing animals. But if I do find some bad mobs here, let's see, we might find some over here. Like even a zombie, doesn't matter. This thing has an AOE that is so powerful. Look at this. Okay, so here's a bad guy. Brand new, just spawned. If I hit its special key, which I have it assigned to R, yeah, it uh, it does some pretty decent damage and you don't even have to look at the mob. It just, it just does it. Apparently these guys aren't considered uh, hostile. But yeah, it just, I mean, that's how much damage it does. It's insane because these guys normally have like up to a hundred plus damage. Like this thing will straight up kill withers and you can see the range is quite far. Also, it's Wednesday, my dudes. Actually, no, it's, it's Friday, <laughs> but still it's my Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, my dude frog. Anyways, I just wanted to show this off because I thought these tools are incredibly powerful. Now with all of our tools out of the way, I do want to start moving this. So our refined storage system is kind of in a tough spot. Um, so I do want to take this now and let's go ahead and get this out of here and uh, get our, give ourselves more power. That's the main thing. Um, I'm going to need more power and plus 
having this downstairs will be a lot easier for our automation room. And I was thinking about just, you know, plugging it in right here. You know, that should work. By the way, these tools are so fast that I can just straight up mine it right here. So yeah, I was thinking about having the refined storage system here. Like, it doesn't seem like it would hurt to have it here. And I can expand by having more than just my basic grid over here as well. Um, and even hooking this interface into the back. Uh, so all I have to do is pop into the back and get everything hooked back in. And then as far as power goes, I'm just gonna tap into the cables that we already have that's running directly under here. So I went ahead and made myself a cyclic automation room. We are gonna be using this to, for one, get into cyclic, um, and then use this to transfer power, fluid, and items remotely throughout our base as needed, at least early on. I think this is gonna be a great starting point. So to get some basic power, we're already using cyclic right here with our lovely battery, but, if we take a look, um, there is one particular item that I'm going to need to be able to make these wireless nodes that we're going to use. And that is a simple crystallized amber. Uh, and the only way you can get this is through the cyclic solidification chamber. And there are some other uh, things that we're going to have to do as well. Uh, but I am going to need to make a solidification chamber and also a melting chamber because it does have some other requirements, thankfully crafting pretty straightforward so we have these two right here um a fluid pipe is definitely recommended and then a wrench from the pipes mod so once we have all of this uh we should be good i think let's see uh cyclic the only thing i'm going to need is the like individual parts that we're going to need for the amber um and other than that, we should be good. So I'm gonna gather all of those things up and we're gonna make this bad boy. So I think for right now, I just need some temporary power. I'm gonna go ahead and place down my melting chamber and my solidification chamber. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and link them together with the pipe and voila. So uh, the melting chamber, we should be good. I should be able to just give it a single magma block. I think that's a full bucket. And that's gonna melt it down and bring that over here in perfect. And then just one simple setup like this and bam, we're good. Because this item does have EMC, the combination of all of those um, gives us a nice amount of EMC here. So uh, I can always set this set up later, but for right now, I don't need it anymore. The only thing I'm gonna need it for is when we go to the end, um, there is another crystal that is gonna require the end. That is gonna be fun because that unlocks a whole lot of cool stuff. But this crystallized amber itself from Cyclic opens up quite a bit. Um, so let's go here, Cyclic, and get some basic, I mean, there, there are several different ways that we could do wireless power in here. I'm not super worried about having a lot of wireless power set up with uh, Cyclic, but the item transfer and other stuff and fluid transfer is actually pretty nice. Um, because we do have other mods in here, uh, like, let's see, uh, like uh, Flux Networks, for example, uh, is in here. So Flux Networks gives us wireless power. Eventually, we're going to get into that. Um, it's definitely worth getting into. But, like I said, Cyclic has a pretty interesting way of doing it. Um, let's dive into that. Let's go ahead and get these nodes made. So all it is is a node. So you can see right here. This is the energy transfer node. Luckily I can just throw that in there. So this is an energy transfer node. And then we have the item transfer node, which is super handy. And then a fluid transfer node. Like I said, all of these super, super worth making. Um, and then to get these to work, we need a thing called a GPS. Um, so this is a block data card that's used for a builder helper, but it's basically like that. Let's see. GPS, this bad boy right here. So this is our GPS data card, which will require some carbon paper. And there we go. We have four of them. So the way that this is going to work, for example, if I need a machine that, uh, let me grab some nodes real quick. So for example, if I have a machine that needs some power, 
Um, I need this block to receive power. Let's say we have power that comes up out of the, the floor here and connects to this and gives us power. We need to now find a block to hook this to. And so we would shift right click on the block with the GPS card. For example, like this right here. Let's say we want to wirelessly give this power. And now we would take this GPS card and we would just place it inside here. These only accept one. Uh, back in 112, they used to accept multiple, which was really nice. But now these are individual, which totally makes sense. But you also get individual redstone power control uh, for each one of those, which in itself is pretty nice. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get an area set up. I think like over here, we'll do uh, like power, then we'll do fluid and items um, for nodes. I think the having those set up are going to be pretty interesting. So this right here is actually a perfectly good example. So what I have is my refined controller or my refined storage network. This needs the power. Let me show you the setup that we have going on in the back because I'm actually going to need access to this because it's in such a tight space. You notice I have my power cable here. I have this block underneath, right? And uh, I don't have anywhere to really put cables. And so the, the only place I could pull cables out would be either from up here, which, and then go through the side, but I would prefer to go down and under. So having room spared down here now makes this a whole lot easier because I can now run this cable down underneath instead of having that power cable there. So all I have to do is select the controller itself. Notice the power is dwindling because it is using like uh, 32 RF per tick or something like that. Um, and then I can go in here and place this. This is going to light up, by the way, when it is sending power. Um, if it's not sending power, I believe it flashes or it does a check every now and then. Um, you will see it sort of flashing. So yeah, it does kind of give an indicator if it is sending power or not. You can see it's it's working there. And we should be able to check our controller. And as you can see, our system has power, which is awesome. Now monitoring how much power is being sent is kind of difficult um, with this particular setup. That's where I said like power from, um, let's see, from Flux Networks is really nice because you can actually see on a per node basis how much power is being sent back and forth. But you can see right here, this is being used um, and this is where all our power is coming from. So, so long as this has a decent transfer rate, um, I do have, uh, let's see, we are able to send 32,000 RF per tick from here. So that's pretty nice using an advanced pipe. So at least we're able to see how much we're able to send, but we're not able to see how much we're actually sending. That is kind of information that I would love to see. Don't know if there's a good way to really monitor that other than refine or other than RF tools, um, which does have a way. I just don't know if it, can, it it's not going to be able to monitor, let's say this machine or this machine and tell me the, the exact transfer rate. Once it's full, it, it, that's when it becomes an issue. Now, I know this may seem a little far-fetched, but this area right here, I actually want to set up a little bit of fluid transfer. So we do have the wireless fluid node that we can use. And of course, this doesn't actually require power, right? So um, all we need is the fluid transfer node. Perfect. And then I'm gonna use a tank, uh, preferably the one, yeah, the, the jumbo tank, which is quite a large tank. And I wanna set up a way to automatically turn on and off our XP tap. I think this can be redstone controlled. I really hope so. Um, so let's go ahead and make ourselves the XP tap. And the goal here is to have a jumbo tank that is implanted into the wall right here. And I wanna wirelessly send power to it. I wanna have a pressure plate that goes here. So when I stand here, this XP tap gets turned on and showers us with experience. Now, how do I do this? Um, can I send power through here? Uh, is this even redstone controllable? Um, I don't know. Uh, so let's actually try, let's move the tank down one. And let's see. Uh, is there a lever maybe that I can use or do I just have to, to use the tap manually? 
Oh, I think I just have to use the tap manually. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have a redstone control. That's okay. Either way, I want a, uh, a tank down here that I can access. And I want it to be filled up from my mob farm. Um, let's go ahead and let's put a lamp behind this as well. So our wireless grid's out of power. Of course it is. So I'm going to put a white lamp behind this. I think that's going to look pretty nice. Because by default, yeah, there's nothing back here. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then cover this all back up. Because the only thing we can do is put that XP tap on there. And do it by hand. Uh, but as you can see, this is going to be nice and filled up. So XP tap, we can go ahead and slap that on there. Now... I need to select this tank with the GPS card and uh, that should allow me to hook it to this. So with the pipes mod, I'm going to grab a advanced pipe upgrade and just a regular fluid pipe. And we're just going to hook this directly into a node. So I'm going to have my fluid node right here, fluid pipe, make sure the wrench is able to send the fluid into here because this is going to have a tank and then we put the gps card in there and now once we give this a nice little upgrade by throwing that in there we should see this tank start to drain and you can see it goes pretty fast we're going to see it start to drain and it's going to start to fill this tank up and now anytime that we need some experience all we got to do pop on the uh the shower head and voila, we have experience at our disposal. I gotta make this look a little bit nicer though. So I've, I've been working on this, kind of getting it looking really nice, but I you notice my hunger is starting to really dwindle here. Um, and there is an item that was made that's in Project Additions now that uh, is pretty nice. Now I know that, that uh, Project E has the ability for you to have a body charm on that makes it so you don't have to eat, but early on, you might want a little bit of EMC steak you might want some of this right here. So it's pretty cheap to make early on uh, for what it is. And it is linked to you. It doesn't quite fill you up as much as a regular steak does, but it does fill you up uh, at a cost of a little bit of EMC. And look at that. Look at your saturation. Bam. Full. Like this, you're good. Like that. that's exactly what you want. You want to be nice and filled up. And that's exactly what this steak does. And uh, at a cost of a little EMC every time you eat it, I would say it's uh, it's not bad. Not half bad at all. So I want to go ahead and put to use some of our uh, our item transfer notes. So to do this, um, this may seem a little bit weird, but I have an item transfer node that is going to be considered an input. And then this item transfer node is just going to be receiving... Uh, the items. Now, I can make this a barrel. I can make this whatever I want. I just wanted to kind of make them look the similar um, and just show you that you can also wirelessly input items into a item transfer node, which is kind of interesting. Um, so I am going to need um, some item pipes. So just like this. And it doesn't have to be, I mean, very fast. I just happen to have the fastest speed or one of the faster speeds. Um, and I'm going to show you this. So basically, we need to link this transfer node here to our input um, so let's head up to where rs used to be and this right here is is exactly where that is going to be uh sending to so i'm going to send it to this barrel because this barrel automatically goes into our redstone furnace and this is going to be a way for us temporarily just to kind of show uh to automate throwing an item in it let's say we need to craft something that needs to be smelted really fast so i can just toss it in here or in that system and it's going to go and automatically be cooked. And then I need my output to basically send uh, to this barrel. Or I need this barrel actually to send to this uh, the item node and give it an item. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and place this item node up here. And then we can go ahead and route an item pipe directly to it. And so anything that ends up in this chest will end up filling this single slot. Um, that's, of course, the goal. And, of course, we can make that fast so that way we can pull the items out as they build up in here. So we already have almost all of this done. The only thing we have left to do is we need to go mark our other slot down here. So let's head down the stairs. 
I would say downstairs. I don't, we don't have any stairs or anything, but here's our input. Our input is already already locked, so we're good here. So anything we put in here is going to send to our smell tree, uh, but we do need to highlight this one as our receiving end. So let's head all the way up here. And then we'll have our receiving, which is going to go here. So in reality, we should be able to send stuff that needs to be smelted into this one individually at the moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and try this. Let's do like clay, for example. So let's say I needed to smelt clay real quick. I just toss it in there. It goes really fast. Like the transfer speed is incredibly fast. But what should happen is I should get brick in return. And there we go. And then like if we only needed one to be smelted, we could do that real quick and then bam, turn it into EMC real quick. And that would be perfect. <laughs> That's exactly what I'd want. Like I said, you don't, you don't have to have a node here. I was just showing that you can actually wirelessly feed into another node if you needed to. And then of course, this node could feed into another machine. So yeah, kind of interesting. So there is all this cool decor inside this mod pack. And I was thinking, how come I'm not utilizing any of it? You know, why don't I make myself sort of an executive office that goes up here and maybe encompasses, let's say these two windows and maybe wraps around this section um, and has an overlooking window that can overlook down to our stuff below. I was thinking, you know, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't be big at all. It can be nice and small and it will fit right in with everything else. But uh, I was thinking like right in here, like a little executive space, I think would look kind of cool. Plus it'll allow me to use some of this, uh, what is it called? XK's Deco, which has some really cool futuristic looking screens and stuff that I really want to put to use. So I am slowly but surely building up this room, kind of getting an idea for what I want. I don't know if I'm going to keep these logs or not, but this is from the XK Deco. So I want to kind of experiment a little bit with the things that are available with this mod. So um, I do have several things at my fingertips. Um, if we take a look here uh, towards this section, we have, for example, these hologram bases. Um, and then these can be put inside here. And I can, for example, grab out like helixes and like all kinds of like funky things. And then these can be EMC. So let's go ahead and throw those in here. Now, um, like for example, this hologram, apparently this hologram base is supposed to take the place of like an item frame. So you place an item frame down and like this covers it. And then you place this in the item frame. Uh, but as you can see, it, it did completely cover the item frame. So maybe place this in first. You can see it shows up and then place this on the outside. And look at that. It covers it up and makes it look like a holographic display here. And then we can change uh, and like create something like this, for example. Um, let's do one of these. And I think like holographic pictures. So we have some spots here um, and I've, I've got to do this. I've, this looks so cool. So we place these down. Looks like it even be placed on the side. I'm going to use the windows for my screens because I do have some screens as well. And we also have these tech tables and I'm guessing the tech tables also like would be able to use this, right? You place this on top and then let's see what, what do I have that would go? I think the holographic pictures would probably look pretty cool on a tech table. We so place this and then the holographic base. Look at that is cool. This is pretty sick. The fact that all this works. Um, so I'll place like that there. This one here and this one here. And so these are kind of just showed up in front of me. And then I'll cover them with this. And this lights everything up. And then we also have like this massive screen here, which seems like it fits perfectly. Yeah, right there. And then we have these other major screens. <laughs> It's like, it's, uh, there's so many different cool screens that we can have. So if we take a screen that's off, um, we can turn it into a plethora of different, uh, kind of monitors or what have you. So like this screen, for example, um, I don't know exactly where to put this though. Uh, I guess it, oh, it could lay flat too. Interesting. 
And this is big enough. Huh. So this like overlays. Yeah, I don't think I want to mess with that. I kind of like having the screen like right where it's at. Or one lower. To where this all sort of fits together. And now I haven't done the floor yet, but I was going to place this down to see what would look good with the floor. Uh, but there's a chair. Even though this chair doesn't look like a captain's chair. Like, it, it does look like a captain's chair. Like, it looks like something you would see in, like, a spaceship. But this, I mean, that's pretty sick looking. You can't, I mean, once we get the floor in and everything, oh, this is going to look, going to look pretty cool. So I thought this was pretty, pretty cool looking. So I have some pipes and stuff in here. I can still sort of see out. I wish I could set in the chair. It doesn't like let you set in the chair, but I did figure out you can place this actually on the block. And so it's not actually on the window, which is kind of nice on the outside. Uh, and then I have a special travel anchor. So on the travel anchor, if I place it down like this, and then I have a hologram base in my offhand, I can make this look like the hologram that's in my offhand. And then I can open this up and set it as my office. And it actually works really, really well. So I can travel over here and then travel to my office. And look at that. That is perfect. The only other thing that's needed inside my office, I think, is like a refined storage just screen. Like somewhere in here. Uh, eventually we'll put one of those in for sure. And this looks awesome. Even from in here, I decided to go ahead and add some of these big fans as well. Um, and then I've surrounded this with the frames because the way these fans set, they don't set flush with the wall like this fan will. Like this little fan sets flush like this could be used for like making airplanes and stuff. Um, but the, the big fans, they don't set flush with the wall so you can kind of see the gap. Um, but you can also place blocks around it. So that's what I did. I used frame blocks. I didn't, I didn't want to go too much around it, but I went around enough and placed a light behind it so it makes it nice and bright. Every time I look at this, by the way, I keep thinking there's a creeper over here. I should probably turn it and make it look a little bit normal. Just replace the blocks back and leave this platform. But still, I think that looks awesome up there. And that was the perfect addition to this little area. Well, guys, at this point, I think HR is going to be super happy. Of, of course, all of our factory workers are going to stay nice and cool. But this office is going to be incredibly cool as we have all the AC in here. But of course, guys, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to go to Barra. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Uh, I think I can go ahead. Yeah, I can slide that on there. Thank you for your amazing support over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. And of course, guys, if you don't know what that is, be sure to check it out. It is go, all you got to do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. Join our discord. It's absolutely free to join. We have an amazing community over there and uh, we do have free servers and stuff. But if you do want to join the modded servers and this is going to be one of the servers that are going to be up fairly soon, be sure to check that out. Of course, that is discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And of course, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to get your world download if you are a supporter of any tier, whether that is on Twitch, on Patreon, on Discord. Be sure to check that out. Get your world download. And of course, guys, thank you so much for your amazing support. I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.